This video is sponsored by Opera. I've built a giant mouse trap before and a giant glue trap. But what would happen if you stepped in a bear trap? A giant bear trap. Backyard scientist here, and in today's video, we're gonna reverse engineer $1,000 worth of bear traps in order to build the biggest bear trap in the world. Starting with the smallest. <laughs> oh, that's nothing. These are pretty pathetic, and I know they're just toys, but they couldn't even hurt a fly or take a bite out of a defenseless vegetable. This next trap, though, this looks like it's got some stab to it. I tried to buy the traps on Amazon, but this is the biggest one they sold, so I had to buy the rest of the traps from a specialty website. This one is about three times the size and 20 times stronger, the perfect size for catching new friends like raccoon, mink, nutria, and muskrats. Hunters go out into the woods and set these traps near burrows and pathways. When an animal steps in the trap, it snaps shut. Or they just throw them like pokeballs. Who knows? One thing I'm sure of though is these little traps are deceptively strong. Oh my god! Oh my god. Three, two, one. Oh! oh. Two, one. Dude. Oh! The <laughs> countdown or you want a surprise? surprise. Now I know that our fingers aren't made out of carrots and cucumbers, so I've got this chicken leg and let's see if this trap can break it. Oh yeah, that's broken. These traps close so fast it's hard to see what's happening. When something hits the trigger and the wiener bounces off, the lever pulls the jaws together when you set it off. This all happens really fast, you'll miss it if you blink. If you want to smash a wiener, you need some beefy springs. Now let's move up to the medium traps, and these things look pretty powerful. These two traps can catch beavers, coyotes, all the way up to mountain lions. And then this trap was $100, and it can catch a full-grown wolf. This thing is massive, and don't let the padded rubber jaws fool you. This thing has some beefy springs on it. And even though the padded jaws might keep it from crushing your bones, you still do not want to oh. step in this thing. Okay, maybe it didn't pop it, but check that out. God. <laughs> oh my Why god! <laughs> Now this medium trap doesn't have rubber jaws, so I wonder if it can break this bone. One. Ah, oh, it didn't crack. I thought for sure that was gonna crack the bone. The medium trap couldn't break the bone, but I'm not giving up. Now it's time to bring out the big guns. Ah! The big guns. And these are real traps. These are real bear traps. This one alone weighs 45 pounds. It even came with a sticker that said, this trap is actually illegal to use and using this trap can result in serious injury or death. So this must be a powerful bear trap and it better be because I spent $350 on it. Okay, now taking the clamps off the jaws, this is the scary part. Okay, okay. Will the bear trap break the bone? Three, two, one. Oh, it completely shattered it. You do not want to step in a bear trap. This thing would probably just cut your leg clean off. Okay, now it's time to make a giant bear trap, and I'm gonna do that by supersizing every part on the smaller bear traps. That means that we need three things, supersized springs, leviathan levers, and jamungus jaws. I found a place that could shape the jaws for me. I just brought them over to your mom's house and she sat on them. Then I went and picked up some other random bits of metal for the rest of the traps. See, I don't exactly have a plan, it's more of a vibe. Welding the jaws to the frame of the bear trap seems like a pretty good start though. So now I've got the jaws, but what about this lever right here? The part that closes the jaws. These two traps use two different mechanisms to close the jaws. This is the old school trap and it uses leaf springs. The new school trap uses these flippy levers instead. I did a quick test to find out if one of the traps was faster. And it turns out the new style of trap was the winner. At first I thought the old style trap was better because it cut the banana in half. But this trap actually has a space in between the jaws to prevent that from happening because uh, it's hard to trap an animal if you just chop its leg off every time. I also noticed all the jaws on these traps are angled and if there was no ramp like this, the springs would have to work really hard to close the jaws and then the rest of the spring's energy is just wasted. If the lever or the jaws were ramped like this, it allows the springs to stay engaged throughout their full travel, pushing maximum energy into the jaws. Now this design is getting pretty complicated. This is the biggest breakthrough in bear trap technology since they were invented 400 years ago. And you know what's crazy? They weren't invented to catch animals. They were originally invented to catch thieves and poachers that were breaking onto rich people's estates. That gives me a pretty good idea. I'm going to bring the bear trap burglar alarm into the 21st century. Hi, today I'm going to teach you how to build a bear trap sentry gun. Step 1. Attach a solenoid to an old drill, and then fashion that to the back of a spear gun. 
When the drill turns on, it pulls the trigger. Tape the spear gun to the bear trap and then run a line from the spear gun to an electric winch. Now when the trespasser comes back to try to sell you more Girl Scout cookies, the sentry gun fires. Oh! Oh! oh it worked! It worked! Oh, it got her! Are you kidding? That's all it did? I thought those bear traps were supposed to be strong and it just made a tiny little hole. So if I want to chop a mannequin in half, I need way bigger springs. These springs are from a Jeep Cherokee and they're rated for 2,000 pounds each. And I have four of them, so that means I need 8,000 pounds to compress these springs. And there's only one thing that I know that can supply 8,000 pounds. Your hydraulics. So, I'm using a hydraulic pump and hydraulic cylinders to compress the springs. Each cylinder puts out about 10,000 pounds of pressure. Yo, it's working! The jaws are supposed to latch in place, but I haven't built that part yet, so we did some tests by standing on them instead. We could only bring it to about 10% power before it felt like the jaws were gonna close on us. There was a problem though. I was getting ready to do some full power tests when I noticed the jaws were bending from the force. You see that bump there? Yeah, no bueno. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get the bend out. So I had your mom make me a new set of jaws, and I welded them on top of the old jaws. Now, they're twice as thick, and they shouldn't warp at all. Now there's only two things left to do. The bear trap's gotten a little rusty, so I gave it a quick cleaning with a laser cleaner. And then a giant bear trap needs some giant teeth, so I cut out a bunch of murder spikes and attached them to the bear trap. Check it out, it's finally done. I can't believe we went from a small bear trap like this to a giant one like this. Let me show you how it works. First, you set the hydraulic pump in reverse to lower the jaws. And next, you pull the trigger back and it locks the jaws in place. Now the trap is set. And now you press this button to compress the spring. And hope it doesn't explode. And finally, you need a log. Oh, <laughs> that's loud, that's really loud. These jaws weigh 65 pounds each. It's actually crazy how fast they slam shut. All right, enough goofing around. It's time for the first test. The first thing I want to smash is a pumpkin. The real bear trap didn't do anything to this pumpkin, so yeah, it's personal. I lowered the jaws, set the trigger, and began compressing the springs, but then the trigger started to slip off of the jaw. The trigger latches right over one of the welds on the jaws. It looks like the trigger's about to slip off the jaw. It might just go by itself. Oh my god, it did! <laughs> Wait a minute, this is a giant bear trap. What am I doing? This is a Big Mac pumpkin. It weighs about 100 pounds and it costs $70. So I think that this is a better test than a tiny dinky little pumpkin. Three, two, one. Yes! It totally cut the pumpkin in half! <laughs> Whoa, look at that! I thought it was gonna be way more full of seeds or something. All right, let's open the jaws. <laughs> they, they get pretty stuck. Wow, not only did it cut it in half this way, but it's totally split it in half, like, down the middle also. Tastes like a pumpkin. It's like pumpkin spaghetti. Why don't you have a bite? Come on, have a bite. No. Have a bite! <laughs> no, no, no. It's vegan! <laughs> Now I want to try this old TV. It might look fine, but the display from Apex Legends has been burned into the screen and all the yellows look green now. This never gets easier. Oh, it went by itself! <laughs> yeah, now it's definitely dead. If you watch the high-speed footage, you can see the moment one of the blades pierces the screen from the back and kills the TV. But when I was looking at the damage behind the TV, I realized it was trying to kill us too. The cord was almost cut, which would have electrified the whole bear trap. Oh my <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Sure. Uh, uh. Now we're gonna smash this giant bone. This is like a full-sized cow bone, and we're gonna put it on the skewer right here, and then we're gonna smash it. I feel like if it doesn't hit it straight on, it might roll out of the way like that, but the other blades are gonna be there, and it's just gonna scissor this whole bone in half. Three, two. One. <laughs> Whoa! It landed. Nuts and bolts came at you. Oh yeah, one of the one of the nuts and bolts fell out. It was like two inches my head. Look at it completely sheared the bone. Look at this. It didn't even crush the bone. It completely sheared the bone. A bone was too easy. So now we're gonna do a cinder block. Three, two, one. Ah! <laughs> Yes! 
You know what, I bet we could do three cinder blocks. Let me give you a demonstration. It's right on the center support of the cinder block. I don't know about this one. Three, two, one. Yes, it worked. It worked, but it barely got through the last one. Did you see that? It was like, doof, doof, doof. this thing is, this thing is pretty serious. Okay, now let's do 40 cinder blocks. Okay, no more cinder blocks, but what about a soccer ball? Three, two, one. Knocked it out of the park. Well, at least over the bushes. What about a crunchy trash can? <laughs> no contest. It actually came really close to cutting it in half. There's only like an inch of metal left right there and right there and right there. I have never seen a trash can turn into a smash can that fast before. I've been pretty impressed with this bear trap so far, but it's time for a dangerous operation. I'm removing the old springs from this bear trap and replacing them with springs that are twice as powerful. I feel like I've been holding out on you, but I've actually been scared the new springs are just gonna tear the bear trap apart. So I wanted to get some cool footage first in case the whole thing exploded. The old bear trap could barely put a dent in this mannequin. So for the first test with the new springs, I'm gonna try to cut this mannequin in half. All right, three, two, one. Oh my God! The whole thing, it just exploded. The top half of her flew that way at like 30 miles an hour. Whoa. It looks like I was right about these springs being too powerful. The force of the impact is enough to rip the teeth right off the jaw. And even though I technically split her in half, it's time for a rematch. Okay, she's going down this time. Yes! I knew it would cut it in half. That was perfect. All right, I knew it. I knew the bigger springs would make a big difference. I mean, this thing literally jumps like three feet off the ground when you fire it. Totally cut the mannequin in half. I mean, the old bear trap could barely put a dent in the neck. Wow, I'm terrified of this thing. Now I want to try smashing all these bottles of soda. Not because I think it's hard, but because I think it's going to look pretty cool. Oh my god, that was way too many bubbles. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> that was so good. It was like a bomb went off in the middle of all those sodas. I thought getting a bunch of different colors of soda would look cool on the high speed. So I got dark soda, clear soda, orange soda. Didn't really make a difference, but it still looked awesome. Plus, it smelled pretty good, too. Everything's gonna be so sticky. It smells great, it though. Smells great. It smells really it smells good. So, good. so the soda was too easy, so now we're gonna try toilet. This thing is hard. It's definitely gonna be a little bit tougher to cut through. Uh, I wonder what's on the inside of this thing. Oh. The toilet's actually pretty scary, because I'm worried about it throwing razor-sharp shards of ceramic everywhere when I smash no. it. I'm, I'm, I'm too nervous, I'm not even aiming. Whoa! That sounded awesome! I honestly thought that smashing the toilet was gonna be harder than it was, but it turns out the hardest part about this was cleaning up the mess afterwards. I know what you're all thinking, what would happen if this bear trap accidentally closed on me? What would it do to a person? Well, that's why we have this guy. This is a dummy made from ballistic gel. It's a special material that's supposed to mimic the properties of a human body. So we should be able to get a pretty good idea of what this bear trap could do to you. All right, compressing the springs. Oh yeah, this guy is going down. Three, two, one. Ugh. One. Ugh. Yes, it cut it in half, it cut it in half. Whoa. This guy didn't stand a chance. It sliced right through the 70 pound dummy with plenty of power to spare. Look at this. That cut it clean in half. This is like the same thickness as I am too. So I'm pretty sure if it didn't cut me in half, I'd be hanging on by a thread. I thought this was gonna be easy on the bear trap, but look at the bolts sheared off of the teeth again, and there's still bits of him under the teeth. Like it took a chunk out of him. Now it's your word from the sponsor of this video. Thank you, Opera, for sponsoring this video and letting me build a giant bear trap that can cut somebody in half. Are you feeling trapped using a boring old web browser? Opera One is a new internet browser with a ton of new and useful features. I've been using it for a while now and I gotta say, this is the one time I don't regret clicking that button. You've heard me talk about VPNs before and guess what, Opera comes with one for free. And tired of annoying intrusive ads, it comes with a built-in ad blocker, which you can also turn off for certain sites. It also has this thing called Tab Islands and I love it. 
And if you've ever seen this icon before or your browser looks like this, you're gonna love it too. It's a smart feature that automatically groups tabs together to stay organized. Now, it's easy to climb out of that Wikipedia rabbit hole and get back to editing videos. And the UI's been reimagined with a modular design that adapts as features are added or tabs are opened. Check out the sidebar, you can customize it with messaging apps, music players, and it has Aria, Opera's built-in AI. And it runs on OpenAI, so it's like ChatGPT but with one big difference. It's web-enabled and connected to the internet, so it can provide you with up-to-date information based on live search results. It can also explain a segment of text, explore similar topics, and translate. So take my word for it, it is definitely worth clicking that button. But first, click the link down below to download it. So by now I'm sure you've noticed that these traps cause a lot of pain and suffering to whatever happens to wander into them. In an effort to create a more humane trap, hunters have gone ahead and created a even more deranged type of trap known as quick kill traps, like this, the gopher grabber. Ugh. There's also this, the gopher stabber, uh, complete with hardened steel spikes. What kind of gophers are you trying to exterminate with this thing? In addition to the gopher grabby and the gopher stabby, there's also the rat gun, the snare trap, the mole scissors, and the M44 cyanide trap, which shoots a cloud of cyanide into an animal's mouth. And then there's the conibear trap. You compress the springs on the conibear trap and then set the trigger in place by folding this lever down. And then the trap goes sicko scissor mode on whatever kind of vegetable it happens to walk through it. And then this happens. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> that was so violent. It cut it clean in half. You know the, the worst part is it doesn't even look like a cut. It's like- It smashed it. Oh yeah, and I knew somebody was gonna say it. Yes, it can also chop through cinder blocks the hard way. 